Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. Uh, my name's Ricky, Ricky Sang. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Altipa. Altipa is a graph database company. So we are building next generation graph database, uh, which is a high performance, um, really, really fast. We can go within on the same hardware platform, uh, within the same, you know, uh, time, we're capable of penetrating the data set much deeper than any other players. And, and why is that? What makes uh, you so special? Okay, all right. I think there are two patent pending technologies. One is called high density parallel computing, mm. uh, which essentially is to squeeze as much juice as possible from the CPU. I mean, CPU mm -hmm. has multiple cores, mm -hmm. multiple mm -hmm. instances in the cluster has a lot more cores, mm -hmm. and we are capable of leveraging all the cores to 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 parallelly process the data set. Mm -hmm. That's the number one pattern. Number two mm -hmm. pattern is actually called a dynamic pruning technology. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we're, we de we designed a data structure uh, we're capable of penetrating the data set or traverse the data set with the minimum latency or minimum time complexity. Nice. Uh, we're almost achieving O1 complexity instead of O log N or N or N times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. log N. So which makes us so much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, we have deployed our systems and solutions with some of the world's largest banks, insurance companies, securities companies, and stock exchanges. Altipa is founded by serial entrepreneurs and inventors from Silicon Valley. And actually, we have a couple of key guys from Europe and mm -hmm. also from China. So we are tackling business challenges with augmented intelligence. Well, consider this. Graph database essentially is a form of AI, but not artificial intelligence. It's really augmented intelligence. So Altipa essentially is a HTAP meaning, you know, hybrid transactional analytical processing database. Mm -hmm. database. We are now building uh, high value and core scenarios for BFI industry, banking, financial services, yeah. and insurance. Our investors, including uh, prestigious sovereign wealth fund and corporate VCs, mm -hmm. like the first one, uh, and the second, uh, real-time anti-fraud, you see other graph database vendors also in this um, category, mm -hmm. but they are never into, you know, asset liability management, liquidity risk management. Uh, and also I think we have done 360 degree comprehensive risk management, mm -hmm. uh, which actually requires a lot of uh, domain knowledge, yeah. especially for the banks, for insurance companies. And uh, we do have like industrial experts from, you know, these BFI's industries. So that enables us to, you know, to unite their experience, their knowledge with our computing power so that we can start building mm -hmm. killer applications. Um, and all right, so there are, well, the use case I'm gonna show off today, which is liquidity risk management. Uh, the showcase is very interesting because uh, by doing similar kind of thing, only using the graph database, we are capable uh, of doing things thousands of times faster than Oracle. Without further ado, I'm going to start uh, introducing the liquidity risk management solution. So today we're going to uh, focus on introducing LCR, which stands for liquidity coverage ratio. Mm -hmm. It's a financial, it's a key financial indicators, like all the regulators around the world are monitoring, you know, every bank's mm -hmm. LCR indicator. So, and we, the unique part about our solution is actually, well, I'm, I'm going to show you, you probably want to take, you know, a screenshot of this part, mm -hmm. traditional database versus graph database, mm -hmm. Oracle's RM solution versus Altipus 
LRM solution. As you can see here, like Oracle needs T plus one, essentially 3.5 to four hours. And we need only two seconds, less than two seconds. And we're capable of doing multiple day change comparison, which is, uh, as you can imagine, every single day there are 300 million transactions. For yeah. two days to do comparison, it's really 300 million versus 300 million. That's that's C volume data. And mm -hmm. we want that to be processed in real time. That's how crazy we are. What I'm showing here is the output manager, very much like a graph studio, you know, mm -hmm. which is the front and the web-based front end for managing the backend graph database nice. cluster. I'm so glad right. to see you have one of these. <laughs> Okay, yes, absolutely. We're going to have to... Well, this is actually a pretty icky thing, but we're trying to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, we have a I lot like, of... I, I mean, I, I like that. Totally, I agree. Well, uh, well, let me just give a quick introduction. Like, the liquidity risk management is actually part of the asset liability management, which is a very big term, any mm -hmm. bank, because mm -hmm. uh, the the bank's treasury department, asset liability department, mm -hmm. they will look into all this data. And as you can see, comparable to relational database, mm -hmm. there are actually multiple graph sets or multiple graphs. Mm -hmm. As you can see, see, there are LCR, asset under management, loan pricing, deposit pricing, deposit loan, raw rock. These are the key RWA, which stands for risk weighted asset. Mm -hmm. um, these are actually the, the data sets supporting, as you can see, how many mm -hmm. nodes and edges. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this. So you're you're okay. tying all of these graphs together for the analytics that you're going to be performing. Yes, mm -hmm. right, right. So what's showing here is actually uh, the LCR schema. You can see here are all the nodes and edges. There are different, uh, we are now using a schematized approach but we can also go schema free. Mm -hmm. So we are pretty flexible. We are calling this demi schema, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have a, like 3.4 million nodes, uh, seven million, uh, not million, I mean like seven, 700,000 edges. Mm -hmm. So the key part is actually to show you that how we manage the graph, because this I'm showing you the backend. So, the LCR that I just mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that uh, this is our Altipad GQL. As mm -hmm. you can see, it's a very simple clause, right? Mm -hmm. uh, starting from a node, name, echo, LCR, mm -hmm. and RE stands for right edge, right direction, right? Mm -hmm. so, and we are searching by this schema, particular schema, it's actually also filtering, very much like label. Column six means we are penetrating the data set for six hops. Six hops, got it. Six hops. That's a pretty, hop that's a pretty big hop for, I mean, maybe you need that for this use case. I'm not as familiar with this use case, but um, that's a lot of hops. <laughs> that's, that's pretty far out. Yeah, well, uh, we can go, we can even go 30 hop. Whoa. That's going to be a, a, a visual and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's maybe uh, too much. Now, of course, you can show the data in 3D fashion. Cool. I like that because you'd be able to see clusters a little bit easier. I actually think this is a great way. It's not the easiest thing to work with on a day-to-day -day basis, but when you're trying to do analytics, um, in a graph that's very large and kind of hard to see, being able to swivel it in 3D is actually helpful. Yes, especially because we use WebGL to accelerate. Uh, mm -hmm. When we have like over 10,000 or even 1,000 nodes and edges, we better use, you know, 3D acceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, the data here is just, uh, you know, all cluttered together. Uh, we want tree layout. Okay, I'm going to show you the tree here. Okay, now this is the big picture. This is the entire tree of the LCR because LCR has 144 yep. sub items. Yep. This is the root of the tree, right? As you can see, now I'm going to focus on showing you. And now, is this just one graph or is this like the hypergraph of all the graphs that you showed us in the last? 
Oh, this is only one graph. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Because we are we are retrieving the metadata from that one graph. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So essentially, LCR is the formula uh, the, with the you know uh, numerator and denominator, and mm -hmm. HQLA is actually the numerator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the I think the net cash flow, cash outflow, is the denominator and. As you can, because I want to give you a little bit of background. Yeah. And also, the, both the numerator and denominator will further break down. Yeah. Very much like, you know, a tree. But it's a, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a, it's more complicated than a tree. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's a graph. It's a network, right? Yeah. I'm going to reset display so that you know. Okay. All right. This is the LCR. Wow, this that's the cool. LCR. Yeah. It's a true 3D stuff. So. Oh, I could see how this would be helpful for digital twinning. Oh, totally. Totally. I agree. Uh, digital twin is one direction that we are very interested in, you know, see mm -hmm. how we can empower them. Uh, so LCR essentially is the indicator, you know, the regulators will uh, mandate that LCR, every bank's LCR should be higher than 100%, mm -hmm. right? Remember, it's formula. And for instance, this bank has the LCR standing at 135.9%. And this is a bank in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, the banks also conducting business using uh, US dollars, Japan yen. Mm -hmm. And for each major foreign currency, uh, the dedicated LCR can be calculated. But I'm going to show you something very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that I mentioned the LCR has 144 sub items. Mm -hmm. So this is the, as you can see, uh, this is the numerator. Mm -hmm. uh, Break down into the tree level of asset cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So as you can see, this is the cash component. I mean, cash item. Everything is interactive on the tree. I mean, on the graph, and you can just you can pick anyone. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So let me explain this to you so by default the calculation of lcr is to collect all the data from yesterday for the past like 24 hours mm -hmm. and you understand so yesterday that was a uh, december 18 right mm -hmm. versus december 17 so day by day do the calculations sure uh, yeah and the interesting part is that who are the top contributors mm -hmm. Normally, the top contributors are enterprise, you know, commercial banks, the other banks that are conducting business with our bank, and or even billionaire individuals. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm using sample data, simulated data. So what's showing here that this customer contributed 2.3 uh, one out of a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So because LCR is a very big number. I mean, they are yeah. dealing with our bank's transactions. So sure. you gotta be uh, billions of dollars for, especially for major banks every day. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is to show like this customer, we're doing actually attribution analysis, which is, which essentially is to tracking, you know, or to do a, you know, decomposition of the customer's yeah. transaction. So, so you're showing all the hops in a way that you aren't losing the network, which I think is pretty cool. Yes. For instance, this customer has accounts with uh, Moscow Bank, Paris Bank, Carroll Bank, Dali, and, you know. And I'm so assuming they, that's that's a set. Yes. Of the, okay. And that's why it's a circle is because that is the, the finite amount. Right. Yeah. Right. And and the product that the customer has been, you know, uh, dealing with the bank is actually unguaranteed wholesale cash outflows. Yeah. Right. And of course, that will further go down to unsecured wholesale mm -hmm. funding and all the way to ca uh, cash outflows, then eventually to LCR. So that's how we do the, you know, 
the back the analysis. So let right. me ask you this. Like I, I got this feedback when I created <laughs> my, my graph wasn't doing anything as cool and probably as important as, as you're doing here with banking, but um, how useful is this from a day-to-day -day perspective? Like, is there um, a, I hate to say like spreadsheet view, but you know, at the end of the day, that, that is what a lot of people would then prefer. This is very cool. Don't get me wrong. And I think a lot of people are going to find this really helpful to like quickly find their answer, but if they need to do deeper analysis, what other views do you have? Great question. Actually, let me show you this. Look at the simulation part. So this is back to the traditional, you know, Excel oh, nice. yeah. kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we are actually doing forward simulation, you know, uh, simulating the future. Mm -hmm. like You're forecasting scenarios. Yeah. And also there is back testing to validate their, you know, our models or projections. Mm -hmm. So these are the typical, you know, um, a very typical, you know, traditional way of working. So we are actually backward compatible. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, Great. So, so if somebody is is modeling right with with your graph, they can then, oh, good, and then, and you have this too. That's great. Oh, also, I again might be a silly question, but I've heard it enough. Um, can people change the color scheme? Absolutely. I mean, okay. yeah. Well, let me show you this. Uh, let me switch back to the manager. I think we are using a dark theme. Let me see. Okay, what did I do? Okay, so we can switch to very light. See? Oh, I see. Yep. So when you're doing that, and I don't want to derail you, but um, so this is the great end results of some of the things that you can do. I would love to be if you could walk us through just like how do you create the the schema and the graph to get to this point. Well, uh, we actually have a separate toolkit that to help customer to create really sophisticated schema, especially when they are importing data from other Great. Uh, data sources, right? It's called Output Maker, but uh, let me see if I can show you, okay, new schema. See the schema here? Yeah. Actually? As you can see, there are default schema, information industry, bank, customer group, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, edge. Yeah. We can actually define schema. It, mm -hmm. ABC, testing, and now we can just, uh, so this is a way to create a schema like what I just created is a node schema and you can also create add schema. Mm -hmm. And now you need to, for instance, column one, right? Yeah. And you they tap, it's int, string, float, double, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, data formats support it. Uh, <laughs> right, it's a, it's a, it's very, see, as you can see, if I expand all of these, see, oh, this one seems to be complicated. Mm -hmm. The BI for LCR, mm -hmm. there is a time, uh, I think this is a timestamp. Mm -hmm. uh, this, somehow this is in RMB. Resume. So then when you are doing your queries at the top, you couldn't create a node. So normally with these, these kinds of queries, you can create and add your node. Is that possible here or is it only query? Absolutely. Data? Okay. It, it is possible. See, uh, see, I type, I just type in create. Yeah. Now you can create user policy, node schema, node property. Node oh, because it's using the schema that you've created to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha.